Hi folks, it's Professor Miller again, and uh, I'm here to talk about categorical propositions once again. Uh, I said I was going to talk about obverse, converse, and uh, contraposition, but I'm going to save that to the next installment, which will be part three. I just want to clarify a couple things from the, the first lecture. <clears throat> um, as I said, historically, Philosophers and logicians agree that there are four standard form categorical propositions. The universal affirmative, or all SRP. S stands for subject, P stands for predicate. All SRP, as in all dogs are mammals. Or the universal negative, <clears throat> no SRP, or no dogs are fish. All right. Then we have, down at the bottom here, uh, we have the I statements, the particular affirmative. It's an I statement, which is some S are P, and the particular negative, some S are not P. So a universal statement either has all or no in, in the beginning. So all S are P, all dogs. That means every dog, everything that could be considered a dog in the category of dogs is within the uh, mammal category. So there are no dogs outside of mammals. So it's universal. It's for all dogs. And universal negative, no dogs are fish. That means for all the dogs, no matter how many dogs you got everywhere, not one of them is a fish. That's universal. And conversely, we'll get, we'll see that no fish are dogs either. <clears throat> so that are the, that's the universal A statements, universal A, universal affirmative, all SRP, universal negative, no SRP. <clears throat> In the bottom, the particular affirmative, some SRP, means that there are some dogs which are black-haired. So some dogs are black. And the particular negative means some dogs are not black. And the way we Use this using Venn diagrams, we can see what they mean. So, obviously, if all dogs, if you have this is the dog category and this is the mammal category, and if you want to make it easier, let's take out S and P and change it with dog and mammal. Okay. So, all dogs, D, are mammals, M. All right, so we're just doing that, dogs and mammals. All right, now, as you can see, there's a dog category and there's a mammal category, but this outside here is shaded, meaning there's nothing in there. There are no dogs in this area. All the dogs are over here within the mammal category. So that, that's the universal affirmative. All SRP, all dogs are mammals. So any dog is in the mammal circle. The universal negative, no SRP, means that where the two circles overlap, the subject and predicate circles overlap, they don't, there's nothing there. It's dark. So S and P stand for subject predicates. As I said before, the subject is the is the main focus of your of, of what you're talking about, and the predicate is what modifies or relates to it. So in a sentence, uh, Jim is big. Jim is the subject. Big is the predicate. Big is an adjective or an adjectival phrase or something which tells you something about the subject. So if we say no dogs or fish, we just take to, to make it clear that we're talking about what we're talking about. We can say no D R F. And it's very clear then that the category of fish and the category of dogs have nothing in common. There's no there's nothing there's no overlap between them. Dogs and fish are not the same when it comes to being different species. All right. The particular, if you can see down here, some uh, say some dogs are black. That means that there's at least one dog. This is the dog category. This is the black category. So at least one dog. When you say some, it means at least one. It could be many more. At least one dog is black. So that's why you put the X there in the middle between the two circles to indicate that there's at least some dogs there. There are other dogs over here, but there's at least one or more there. 
And when you say some are not black, or some are not, let's say, some dogs are not beagles, that means there's some dogs which are over here in the dog category, which are not in the beagle category. All right? So the particular affirmative has an action in the middle, showing that there's at least one thing in there where the two circles overlap, and the, and the particular negative has an X in the subject category, indicating that there's at least one subject which is not in the predicate category. Okay? So there's at least one dog which is not a beagle. <clears throat> of course, there are, there, are, there are more. A lot of more. There are several more. The thing is, when you say some are or some are not, it doesn't speak for all dogs. It's not universal. It's only talking about some. So a subset of dogs are black. A subset, a subset of dogs are not beagles. So um, you can say also here that some dogs are not black. So we had, if you change the not here, the X would be over here, meaning that they're not in the area where it overlaps. So that's just a quick rundown. Now, as I said, logicians are concerned about quantity, quality, and, and distribution, meaning is it universal? Qual quantity means is it universal? Does it talk about all things or no things? Or is it talking about particular some things? Some things are, some things are not. Quality means is it positive or negative? So all, no, and some are called quantifiers, but there's no qualifier because the quality of positive or negative depends whether it says are, no, or are not. Those all refer to whether something is uh, positive or negative. So it, it changes in terms of the structure of the sentence. Now, what I was saying before, <clears throat> Is that in addition to in addition to quantity, quality, and distribution? The distribution again deals with whether it refers to everything. So the A sentences distribute the subject because it talk, when you say all things, all subjects or predicates, you're talking about all things, all dogs, everything in that class. That that means the, the S class, the subject class, is distributed. With the universal negative, no dogs or fish. It's referring to all dogs and all fish, so both the subject and the predicate are distributed. With the I class, you're talking about some dogs are not black things, so neither one is talking about all dogs or all black things. You're talking about just some, so that means it's not neither the subject nor predicate is distributed. And with the particular negative, some dogs are not beagles, it means the subject is not distributed because it's just talking about some, some dogs, not all of them. But it, the predicate is distributed because you're saying among the predicate of beagles, there are some dogs that are not there. So it, these dogs do not belong to the whole class of beagles. So therefore, the predicate in an O statement is distributed. This would become more useful when we're talking about uh, categorical syllogisms. Now, really, uh, just a quick review again, one more time. Logicians are concerned about what they call the logical... Uh, relationships or what they call immediate inferences. What can you infer if you know that a all SRP, what can you infer about the rest of those of these different organizations of the terms? All right. Um, so for example, in modern logic, Boolean logic, modern logic does not recognize any of these relationships except the con contradictories. The contradictories are the A and the O and the E and the I. And even modern logicians realize that if you're saying some, like if you say, okay, all dogs are mammals, and the O, some dogs are not mammals, you'd have to, the sum indicates you're talking about at least one. So therefore, modern logicians say, even from the modern, uh, how do you say, the square of opposition, the modern square of opposition, these things can draw unconditionally valid inferences. If A is true, O is not true. If if O is true, A is not is false or not true. Same thing. If E is true, the I statement is false or vice versa. Okay. Uh, so if all if no dogs are fish, then you can't say that some dogs are fish, right? Uh, and if you say some dogs are black, you can't say that no dogs are black. Those are logically contradictory. So from Bull's point of view, from the modern standpoint, there is an immediate inference to be drawn between these things because they're contradictory and 
from the modern standpoint, they are, the, the inference is unconditionally valid. Now, from the traditional or Aristotelian point of view, they're conditionally valid. But they're only valid if, if and only if, what you're talking about are things that really exist. So Aristotle would say, if you're talking about black dogs and fish and stuff like that, then yes, these, these contradictory things are unconditionally valid inferences that you can make. But if you're talking about flying zebras or, you know, green unicorns or something, no, then he would say, no, these things do not really exist, so you can't make any inferences. Now, according to Aristotle, however, in the traditional square of opposition, you can make inferences. For example, if the A or the E statement is true, if one or the other is true, then the opposite one must be false. So, for example, if you say all dogs are mammals, then you can't say that no dogs are mammals. That has to be false. However, um, you can also say that they can both be false. They can't both be true. If one is true, the other has to be false. But if one is false, if one is false, then the relationship to the other, to the from the A to the E, is undetermined. Let me give you an example. If you say all men are six feet tall, well, obviously that's not true. That's false. Then what does it indicate about the E statement? Can you say that no men are six feet tall? No, that that doesn't logically follow. So when an A statement or an E statement is false. The relationship to the opposite, to the contrary, is undetermined. It's only determined if you know that one of them is certainly true. Okay. Uh, okay. Then with the subcontraries, the I and the O, <clears throat> if one is true, the other can be true. They can both be true, but they can't both be false. Uh, let me give you an example. Um, if I say some dogs are black, some dogs are not black. They're both true, right? Right? Okay, but if I say um, some people are 20 feet tall, that's definitely not true. So it must be true that some people are not 20 feet tall. So when, when one of them is false, the other has to has to be true. Or they can both be true, but they cannot both be false. All right, now, with the subalternation, that's the relationship between the, the universal affirmative and the, the particular affirmative, or the universal negative and the particular negative. Again, the immediate inference is, if the A is true, the I has to be true. If all dogs are mammals, then obviously some dogs are mammals. And to do it in a, in, a, in a way which makes sense, according to the Venn diagram, what logicians do is they say, well, if all dogs are mammals, you can assume that obviously one, there's at least one dog really existing that is a mammal. They put an X with a circle around it to mean that there isn't a, a real thing there. And so the, if the A is true, the I looks the same way. It has to be true. See, the I has the, the I has the, uh, it says an X in the middle, this says an X in the middle. And if the universal negative says that no dogs are fish, then obviously some dogs over here are not fish. And so again, they put an X with a circle around it to mean there is actually one real dog, which is not a fish, and therefore it resembles this real dog down here, which is not a fish. So they say that truth flows downwards. Truth flows downwards because if the universal is true, particular is also true. However, it doesn't go the other way. The, the other way, falsehood flows up, falseness flows up, but truth does not flow up. For example, you say, uh, some dogs are black. You can't say, therefore, that it implies that all dogs are black. But if all dogs are black, then it implies that some dogs are black. So if you say that, um, Uh, let's see. Uh, some dogs are okay. Let me just stop for a second. 
if you say some dogs are um, purple, that's not true. So therefore, if you say some dogs are purple, it's a falsehood, and therefore you can't say that all dogs are purple. So if the particular is false, then the uh, universal is also false. And the same on the other side. Uh, falsehood flows up. So, um, if you say that some dogs are not carnivorous, and that's false, then you can't say that no dogs are carnivorous. Okay, so falsehood, if the particular is false, the universal is also false. If the universal is true, the particular is also true. One last thing, from a Boolean point of view, Boolean logic says that logical statements do not necessarily correspond to existential reality. That's why you can't say that if all dogs are mammals, that some dogs are mammals, because they're saying, no, because we don't know if there are any dogs. This is a hypothetical thing. We don't know that there's actually some dog existing, which is a mammal. Now, we know practically that doesn't make sense. But from the logical point of view of the modern standpoint, you can't make these immediate inferences. They would call, they would call that an existential fallacy you, because you're saying, well, that these things really do exist. Because you could say, you know, uh, all flying zebras are purple. Does that mean some flying zebras are purple? No, because flying zebras don't exist. So that's the logical position of the modern view, that there are no immediate inferences other than the, the, contra the contradictories. But from, again, from Aristotle's point of view, you can make various uh, media inferences if you know that the things you're talking about actually exist. All right, I just wanted to clarify that and give you like a little second look at categorical propositions to clear up anything that was not clear from the first one. Uh, so again, thank you for listening. Stay safe and stay healthy. And I will go on in my third uh, video to talk about uh, conversion, obversion, and contraposition, or statements which are the converse, the obverse, and the contrapositive of the original categorical statement. All right, so have a good day, and I'll talk to you again soon.